Okay. Welcome back to another Unreal study session. I'm your host, Strange Road Jim, and you can't see my video cam, uh, my <laughs> webcam at this moment. In time. Hold on a second. Let me let me see if I can get this fixed again. Hold on. It always uh, it sometimes likes to likes to do this for some reason. It's, it, turns off whenever I do a scene switch. There we go. There I am. <laughs> Welcome back to another Unreal study session. I'm your host, Strange Bird Jim, and we're going to be joined uh, by Blackheart. I see him already in the stage. I'll be with you in just a second there, Blackheart. Um, um, so today we're going to be continuing our study of audio in the Unreal Engine. Uh, we're working our way through uh, studying all the documentation or at least, well, maybe not all the documentation, but as much as we can to kind of prep ourselves before we really tackle making something. Um, because um, if we if we try to you know create something right now uh, without knowing uh, the engine that we're using, then we're just going to be making a lot of mistakes and just making it harder for ourselves. So. Um, we're studying the documentation. We're trying to learn as much as we can about it first. Um, and not to say that we won't make mistakes when we start building, but you know, at the at the very least, we're going to try to mitigate at least some mistakes. Uh, so, um, so here, you know, the idea is we'll study the documentation. And we'll get ourselves prepped with all the different topics that are available. Um, through their 4.27 documentation, which you can follow along with us if you want. Um, prep ourselves for making a clone game, and then eventually uh, we'll start you know, building our own. Uh, so that's the plan. Um, so hopefully you'll continue to join us on this endeavor on studying, building the clone, and then start working on a game for ourselves. But with that being said, let me go ahead and invite Blackheart in to speak. There we go. How's it going there, bud? Not bad. Oop, oop, oop. There we go. Ah, headset, audio set. <laughs> so everybody can hear you now. Um, hey there, Strigen. How you doing, bud? Welcome to the stream. Okay, so... Um, cons uh, where do we last leave off with the sound attenuation? Uh, As specialization, I believe. Yeah, was it attenuation or enable? I, know uh, was... I think we read that little piece of attenuation. We didn't get to the enable part. Okay. Yeah, I was kind of thinking the same thing, but I wasn't a hundred percent sure. So, uh, how's the storms out there right at this moment in time? <laughs> yeah. Hopefully no storms right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, let, let's go ahead and uh, get into the enable then, and we'll uh, continue on, okay? Um, any, any concerns or comments that you might have seen there, bud, or...? Not yet, no. Okay, I haven't I haven't received anything on my end either, no comments or or anything along those lines on my videos. But you know, it's okay. Uh, we'll just keep on plugging away at it. Um, that that being said, if anybody's watching right at this moment in time, okay, um, Blackheart and I, you know, especially in this particular session with the audio, we're not sound engineers. We haven't really nope. worked with any kind of sound, and you know, in that regard. So there's going to be, and there was a lot of um, information presented in this working with audio that we were like, uh, no idea what what they're what the heck they're talking about. Um, so we encourage anybody that. Um, might be watching us, you know, whether live right now while streaming, or if you're watching these videos later on when we upload them to our YouTube channels, to feel free to, you know, 
um, let us know or you know explain what we're maybe not understanding you know uh, you know uh, we encourage that um, we appreciate any constructive criticism or um, assistance when, especially when it comes to the audio section so uh, please feel free to speak up okay um, whether it's right now in the comment section or, or you know in in our in our chat in our live stream chat or um, in the comments in our videos because it would be of great help to not only us but you know maybe maybe someone else might be watching our videos and they might also not understand you know they might not also be sound engineers so it might help them as well so you know they might have the exact same questions that we do so not only would you be helping us out but you might be helping out others along the way so um so it's always encouraged to uh to feel free to you know put down some comments letting us know um you know uh, hey you know if you if you're not understanding this particular topic here's how to think about it or something along those lines or link us you know videos to watch or or other web pages to look at or something along those lines you know anything that can help is welcome Agreed, my friend. Every little bit helps. Exactly, exactly. So, um, so don't be afraid to um, let us know. Like, hey, this is this is how you have to think about it. So, you know, if you don't know, that's perfectly fine as well. You know, I hope that you're still enjoying our content. So, um, so. Uh, enables spiralization. Uh, so this property is used to enable or disable spectralization of the sound. When true, the sound will be spectralized from the specific location within the game world and will pan accordingly as the listener moves around. Use this if you want the sound to appear to come from a particular location in the game world. Uh, e.g. a spot source sound. So, um, okay. We'll pan accordingly as the listener moves around. Okay. Um, well, I mean, if, if you have like surround sound speakers, right? You know, yeah. you have, you have, you know, the, the, you know, basically, you know, center, uh, front, right and left, uh, side, right and left and back, right and left. Right. Um, if you are kind of circling around, but there was a sound off to your right, then the, the sound, you know, will be, you know, changing its direction, you know, in in the speakers as well you know it will also be moving because that that sound location won't move you know it's, it's stationary so you know the 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 speakers themselves will be receiving that input of sound happening and will you know transfer it you know to you you know to your ears um but obviously, you know, um, you know the like if if you're if you're doing like a 360 and the sound is supposed to be stationary, but you're always hearing it in your right ear, then obviously that breaks immersion, right? Yeah, like something went wrong there. Yeah, you know, like if there's if there's like a stationary siren, okay, like tied to a building. Okay, and you know you're you're you know you're rotating yourself a 360. You know you're like spinning in a circle. Okay, but you're always hearing that siren sound in your right ear or something along those lines, or that right speaker. Then yeah, you're you're breaking. You know you're you're having bad uh, bad sound design, right? You know. Yep. You know because otherwise, if you if you think about it, if if it's 
staying in your right ear and you're going in a circle, that would mean that the building and the speaker is also, you know, circling you, you know, whether you're going clockwise or counterclockwise, whatever, it doesn't really matter. If it's like always in your right ear, it's like suddenly you're making the building move and that would be a little freaky. That would be really freaky, to be honest. <laughs> um, yeah. But, um... Hey, that's a good horror game idea there. Yeah, indeed. Indeed. You know, it's it's not you that's uh, that's moving, it's the world. <laughs> and that's... Uh, that might be a little trippy. Um, so... But, I mean... You know, what... That's not necessarily totally incorrect either. If you know, if if your universe kind of you know uh, rotates around you, then it would be the world that rotates, right? <laughs> sort of. <laughs> oh. Um. But we'll, we'll move on. Uh, when when false, the sound will be non-specialized, which will effectively become a 2D flat sound. So no panning will be applied, regardless of the sound's source position relative to the listener. The exact nature of this process will depend on the configuration of your speakers and the format of your sounds. For example, if you're using stereo playback, then a mono sound would be upmixed to stereo, while quad 5.1 and 7.1 sounds would be down mixed to stereo. You can set the method used when up mixing mono sounds within project settings in your audio quality mono channel up mix method. You may need to expand the quality section using arrow. Okay. <laughs> um, again, up mixing and down mixing is a little not quite sure exactly what they mean by that in particular or at least i'm not remembering what they mean by that do you remember no i'm not totally sure i don't i don't know if they've if they've covered up mixing and down mixing before uh they mentioned it i don't think they covered it yeah i don't think so. you know so so that's that's one thing that could, you know, be helpful <laughs> if anybody has a comment, you know, feel free to like, let us know what those mean in terms of, you know, audio, obviously. So, um, use this if you don't want the sound to come from a particular location in game world, such as an area loop or room tone. Hmm. Okay. Okay, specialization method. This property allows you to define which panning method you want to use when specialization, specializing the sound. Huh, I can speak. Uh, currently, there are two options. So, panning. This is the default and uses Unreal Engine 4's standard panning method to calculate spatial positioning. When using this method, you can define as a global project setting whether to use linear or equal power padding. Okay. Use linear or equal power padding. I hope they cover those a little bit later because I don't really understand what Hopefully. they what they mean by linear or equal power. Um, no. I mean they they. They talked about linear up here, you know, at the very top, you know, under the attenuation function, but I don't think that's what they mean by by linear, because again, there's no equal power in the attenuation function, so no. so I I doubt that that's exact, you know, the you know, uh, they're they're talking about that particular topic in, in question so um so yeah that's i'm kind of curious about this hopefully it will cover 
a little bit later, uh, but obviously they're not doing that now. So uh, this can be found within the project settings, blah, 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 all these uh, particular steps to get to this particular panning method um, portion of the menu system. You may need to expand the quality section using the little arrow. This method is the best one to use if playing back over loudspeakers. Okay, in what way? Um, yeah. That feels like it needs more explanation. Yeah. You know, what do they mean by playing back over loudspeakers? Do they mean loudspeakers in game? Or do they mean like loudspeakers um in your surround a sound or something like that and if so again how you know what exactly are they talking about here <laughs> mm -hmm. um you know what do they mean um now okay now when i think of panning bear in mind okay i think of visual panning where you're basically saying, okay, um, you know, I have I have a video recording camera, or you know, I'm using my phone or something like that. I'm recording video, and I'm moving the the recording device, whether it's a camera, phone, whatever, um, you know, uh, along, you know, like uh, I'm changing the focus of it from like one spot. I'm moving it to like another spot to be visually focused on, uh, focused on, right? Um, right? Like if you if you like have a crowd of friends kind of thing, or like a group of friends, and you want to just kind of record like everybody's like you know face, like just their face, right? You know, obviously that's kind of hard to do in a um, you know, you can record their faces with a wide shot, but, you know, maybe you want to go in for close-up shots, right? But, you know, you can't necessarily do a close-up shot with everybody's face. It, it doesn't really work. So you want to try to pan the the device to kind of cover everybody's face one by one, you know, showing everybody's face as you go along, right? Um, now, I don't know if that has the same kind of definition in the audio sense um like um uh like i would imagine you know just hypothetically a panning of an audio would be like hey here's this audio coming from the front from front of us right you know uh, we can hear it clear as day it's coming from in front of us uh but we want to say wrote rotate to our left, right? We're going to kind of rotate our perspective to the left. Well, the sound, instead of being right in front of us, would have to switch over to our right ear, all right? So it would be panning, you know, to the front right speaker and then to the side right speaker, you know, if we're using surround sound, right? So the, the sound itself could be panning in that regard, right? I don't know if that's if that's what they're talking about here. <clears throat> uh, it's the only thing that I can think of. It's an educated guess, but at the same time, it doesn't feel like they're really, it's, you know, they're not saying that in this section. Or at least it doesn't feel like they're saying that. Um, do you agree with me in the fact that it doesn't feel like they're mentioning what panning is at all or yeah i feel like like it's lacking details yeah so i would hope that my if you know i would hope my educated guess is spot on but i don't know um, now, obviously, you know, we can definitely test this out, you know, when we 
you know, start building the game, you know, the clone or, you know, our own, our own personal game, uh, we can definitely try to check on that and see if it, if it is indeed, you know, what we think it might be, but it's just, it'd be just nice if they actually had some form of, you know, further explanation there. That's all. So. Uh, and it also looks very similar in this um, binaural. So, um, so binaural uses whatever binaural plugin you have enabled by uh, enabled to handle the spatial positioning of your sound. The plugin can be set with blah 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 blah. blah. You can use the built-in specialization plugin or enable a third-party one via the plugins window. This method requires playback over headphones as uh, binaural panning does not translate well over loudspeakers. Huh? <laughs> Wait, what? I'm... I don't know whether going to say there yeah again it's another one where it's like wait why would it work over headphones but not over loudspeakers that doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever so there's something going on with this that i'm not 100 percent sure what they're talking about here so i'm i'm hoping Maybe we'll figure it out sometime in the future. They'll s explain this a little bit better. But I mean, this was the place for them to really explain it. And so far, they yeah. did, they really didn't do a good job. <laughs> yep. So, um, again, if anybody knows, feel free to leave it in a comment section, chat, whatever uh, would be welcomed. So. Okay, uh, well, I guess we'll just move on. Uh, yeah. Non-specialized radius. The property defines the distance threshold below which the sound will start to transition from, be from being specialized to non-specialized. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, becoming a 2D sound. This is useful for preventing sunning, if not jarring jumps in the Spatial positioning of a sound when close to the source. And it is also useful for helping large sounds to fill the spatial field when up close, such as large machines, waterfalls, etc. Hmm, okay. Um... I'm not quite sure what they're really talking about here. I'm not sure either. Um, becoming a 2D sound. Again, with the 2D sound, I'm not quite sure what they're really kind of referring to in that regard. Um, like, okay, so specialized, spe specialized, whatever, uh, however pronounce it, um, is supposed to be kind of filling in that area, right? It's kind of saying like, hey, it, you know, if you have a specific area, it just kind of fills in that area, right? If I, mm -hmm. if I remember correctly, that's, that's the definition that they, uh, that, um, you know, spatial is all about. Um, so when it's non, meaning that it's not set to um, fill that area, you know, it's saying that it's a 2D sound. What do they mean by that? It's like you're you're getting hit with like a wall of sound, like you pass a wall of sound for like a split second you hear you know you hear like the sound go whoosh 
and that's it. You're you're done, and no more sound. You know, when you pass that two D wall or something along those lines, it's like I'm not quite sure exactly what they're kind of talking about here, or or how really. So it doesn't make that much sense to me because it's like sound sound you know depending on where it's coming from is you know goes off in a 360 direction you know to, unless of course there's like walls or something like that that prevents the sound from really going through it very well but still my um why are we uh what you know what's with this 2d sound all of a sudden or what's what's that all about mm. we may need to look into it at some point ourselves yeah. maybe a video that explains it better yeah um especially saying it's like you know uh it's also useful when helping large sounds to fill the spatial field when up close I mean, what's what's the difference? Why, you know, why would you want to if if you're if the sound is you know already spatial in in you know in regards like you know such as large machines, waterfalls, and stuff like that, it's already kind of you know encapsulating that area of effect. Then, you know, what's what's the difference? when you want to try to switch it over to non-specialized, it's like, what, what's going on there? I, you know, I don't know. Not quite sure what they're trying to go for there. So. Hmm. Um, well, we'll move on, right? Yeah. Okay. In the image below, the sound of a large machine has been set to have a non-specialized radius of 450, depicted by a green sphere. Okay. When the listener is beyond this, the sound will be specialized as normal, but as the listener crosses the threshold, all channels of the sound will start to bleed to all channels of the speaker configuration. This process is interpolated, starting at the defined threshold and ending at a 100% bleed at the sound's origin. As an example, a stereo sound being played back on a 5.1 system would have its left channel bleed to all five channels, and its right channel bleed to all five channels. Uh, the result of this is a sound that starts to fill the spatial field in which in whatever speaker conversion you're using, the sound will start to come from all the speakers, giving a much more convincing scale, uh, sense of scale. Okay. Um. Okay, so... So, basically, what I'm... What I'm getting from this, you know, feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, you know, because I, I could be. Um, or at least, you know, if you feel like I'm on the wrong track, let me know. Um, so when you're outside the field there, okay, they're basically saying, hey, you're you're having specialized sound, which means that you, you know, the sound that you're getting might only uh, go to like one of your channels, like you're... You're hearing it from the left-hand side, so you're only going to be hearing the sound from more the left-hand side than you are from the right, right? You you probably wouldn't necessarily hear it on on your right speakers at all, you know. Um, maybe there might be a little bit of bleed depending on how loud it might be, right? But um, but. Typically, you know, if you're hearing the sound from from to your left, then you know, like, hey, I need to go towards that large sound. Like, I'm, I need to go towards the, to the waterfall, so I hear it off to my left. Let's go to the left and continue walking, right? 
and then they say when you enter in that sphere that is non-specialized, they're basically saying it's so loud, it is so, um, it is so prevalent in that area that you're hearing it all around you. There's, you know, you're, you're basically standing in like, you know, right in the waterfall. So now the sound is just occurring all around you. You know, the roar of the water, the, the overall sound is just coming from all the speakers. So. Not on one side than the other. Right. Um, so, okay, but again, that, that kind of confuses me a little bit, you know, if, you know, if, if, you know, are you in agreement that that's what it sounds like, to, to, you know, it's, that's what it sounds like to you and from what they're, they're talking about, right? Yeah, the, the it'll sound in every channel, but one will be louder depending where you're facing. But you're still listening through every single channel. Right. Um. So. But. So here's here's where I'm like, I'm still confused by it a little bit, is the fact that. Um. You know the the one the one part that I'm like, okay, you know what's why are they addressing it as such, which is this part right here becoming a 2D sound. You know what are they talking about here in in regards of the non-specialized? Because I mean when you the bleed out like on specialized the possibility of sound leading into any of the other speakers is just not possible while Chudy allows for the sound to bleed into other channels. Like that's what I'm understanding. Yeah, it's just That's the, that's the only difference major difference that I'm finding. Like, yeah. One it... allows bleeding, the other one doesn't. Yeah. Um, it's just, it feels weird when they are addressing the, the one that is allowing the bleed as a 2D. You would think that it would be kind of the exact opposite, you would think, right? That, um, if it's, if it's affecting all the channels, if you're being hit from the sound from all directions, you would think that that would be more of a, I guess, a 3D sound. So that's why it's like, you know, I'm I'm a little confused by their. Uh, Maybe this is how they they simulate the three D sound, especially when it comes to scale. Hmm. Maybe I don't know. Not sure. Um. Like an example I can think of right now is like say you're inside a closed hangar and there's a jet engine on. Right. That's gonna be very loud and it would be like echoing all over the place. And how would you simulate that? Like the non specialized would be the one helping simulate that. Right. Because you're getting that bouncing echo from the walls while the one from the engine sounding much louder on depending on what you're facing right um yeah no i so based you know they actually get it gave a good explanation here from from the looks of it okay um if if we are correct in what we're in what we're trying to see here right um my 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 question is why are they calling um specialized to non-specialized becoming a 2d sound that's where i'm not i'm like what <laughs> you 
you know, you would think that it would be the exact opposite. It's becoming more of a 3D sound. It's you're hit, getting hit with the sound from all directions than just from one source that's more of in a, from like a single direction, right? You know, um, you know, when I think of 2D, you know, a flat surface, you know, um, you're not really, um, when I think of, when I think of 2D, it's like, you know, hey, I'm going to pick one direction that the sound is kind of coming from, for the most part, you know, um, uh, because, you know, that's, that's where the speakers are, you know, you have the left and the right ear for head, headset, right? So, you know, you're either going to be getting the sound from your left or you're going to be getting the sound from your right. There isn't anything like, hey, I'm going to be hearing it from, uh, well, I mean, you could like hear it more at a 3D angle than anything else, but, um, Maybe maybe that is the maybe that's the trick. Maybe maybe that is what they're kind of talking about, like the two D sound. Now that I think about it, because if you're hearing it from everywhere, right? Right. There's there's no way to discern, um, like where the main sound would be like originating from, like. Um, like if you enter a waterfall, you're not going to be able to, you know, you know, you're not necessarily going to be, uh, able to discern like, Hey, the waterfall's right above me or the waterfall's right below me or waterfall's off to my right, right or left or anything like that. It's all encompassing. It's all over the place. So, um, so your your left and right ears are being drowned out by the sound no matter what and you can't hear like specific like locations like you would if you're like in a 3d space in a, in a specialized space so like if you're in a specialized area and you're hearing a sound it could be you know like below and to your right it could be up above and to your right you know same with your left or you know so on and so forth right you you kind of you might hear that sound from a from like an angled location on the map if especially if you're working in 3d right so so maybe that's it maybe hmm Maybe that's what they're talking about. You know, I don't know. Um, I'm not. It's it's the, the best educated conclusion that I can think of right at this moment in time. Would you agree with me or do you disagree? I think my... that makes the most sense. Okay. Um, you know, I mean, if you, if you disagree, feel free, you know, obviously, you know, like, Jim, you're being stupid, <laughs> you know, um, you know, don't, don't forget to you know, speak up if you're, you know, if you feel like I'm on the, on the wrong track along those lines, but I think that's probably what they're talking about. It's, it's weird. It's, it's kind of a weird way of thinking about the sound, especially when you're like, hey, I'm going into an area where the sound is like all over. Like you're you're just being drowned in the sound. So you would think that you would um, the you would think that it would be more of a 3D sense in that you're you know, you're you're basically hearing the sound in all the speakers and you know in the up and down direction kind of a thing. You would think that it would be it would fit more in a 3D sound um, uh, label, but at the same time, it's like, well, you know, I guess it, I guess it still works with the 2D. You know, I don't know. Um, 
um, maybe maybe a little bit more explanation there would be fantastic. So if anybody knows, you know, feel free to like leave a comment like always. Um, but you know, I'm hoping that that's correct. I don't know. Well, let's move on, my friend. We got a lot to cover. <laughs> oh, definitely. So. Uh, 3D stereo spread. This property defines the distance between the left and right channels of a stereo sound when specialized in the game world. This is useful for creating a greater sense of width and size when using stereo sounds. It can also help mitigate sudden jumps in the spatial position of the source. In the image below, the green and red spheres depict the left and right channels of the stereo sound which have been positioned either side of the machine through the use of the parameter, use of this parameter. Okay. Um. Uh, am I, are we, are we going to have to try to f figure out Stereo spread? Uh, well, I mean, okay. Obviously, the... You know, I'm not... I would not want to tackle 3D at... With just ourselves. Okay. Well, let me... Let me reiterate that to anybody that's watching for the first time. Right? Um, I don't really want... I personally don't really want to start a 3D project until we have a... An established crew... Team with us okay um if it's just myself and blackheart i feel 3d would be um too much of um, depends on the scale yeah i mean i'll grant you that but if it's if it's too much if our if we design a game that is has too much there then um I, I wouldn't really want to try to tackle it. Um, plus, if we even if we were to try to do a small scale game, um, we would have to most likely uh, use like free assets because I'm not going to be able to draw a you know an an avatar or something along those lines or draw a, like a gun or whatever we decide to go with. You know, in 3D, and try to make sure that it it works. Until I learn Blender, <laughs> which I am doing. Yeah. Um. But um. But I don't know. Um. I'd I'd prefer we start easy first. You know, start start with more of a 2D skin 2D uh, style game first. You know start kind of establishing what we want to work on what we want to do a little bit more before we start you know branching into 3d and even then um i'd, I'd yeah, it would be depend on the scale of how well we can do yeah and I'd, I'd rather have a you know more of a team with us um to help uh, you know to help us out because I mean let's face it you know you and I we're gonna be coding a lot if we start going into 3d so <laughs> um, so um, so I fear you know the trying to do a um, trying to do a 3d game might might take a bit of, of work. Not to say that we can't do it. I'm just saying that, um, you know, the scale of what a 3D is is larger than what a 2D would be. Okay, that's all. You know, um, you know, anybody that thinks a 3D and you know a three, you know, making a 3D game is easier than a 2D game is. <laughs> I don't know. I, I it all falls down to scale. Yeah. Um, I say we were to make like a five minute 3D game, then that can be managed by just two people, even one person. Potentially. 
um, especially if we reuse uh, if we use free assets okay if we have free assets then yes that it won't be too difficult but if we're having to make at the assets ourselves then that that ramps up the yeah. uh, what we're gonna be needing to do more right um, because we're gonna have to try to construct the the art the 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 rain you know the um, you know making sure that you know the position of whatever we're looking at uh, doesn't destroy the model if we change the position some way or, or not like like you know we look at this the gun and the sphere like right above in this image right above like if we were to somehow change the camera angle so that the game and the gun kind of switches from the this right side position over to more of a left side position and suddenly the gun just kind of um deforms then we got some problems <laughs> you get what i'm saying yeah so um the not to say that 2d wouldn't be difficult i'm just saying that the um we would be dealing with more when we're dealing with 3d that's all so um all right so normalize 3d stereo sounds uh this property is used to enable or disable a six decibel gain reduction applied to stereo sounds when being specialized in the world this is useful if you find the sound clipping due to channel summing when the stereo spread reduces to zero either as a result of the 3 stereo spread property above or through distance related panning what the hell is this talking about I don't really know. I'm not sure. This is useful if you find the sound clipping due to channel summing. Again, I don't know what channel summing is referring to. Me neither. When the stereo spread reduces to zero. Which, I mean, they, they talked about stereo spread above, and it's like, you know, again, I'm not not 100% sure about what they're talking about by the stereo spread, really. Um not not a hundred percent sure what they're trying to go for with it when it comes to stereo spread so i don't really know exactly what they're kind of talking about there so when the stereo spread produces to zero either as a result of the 3d stereo spread property above or through distance related panning um Hmm. Okay. Um Let me let me take an educated guess on this and see if you feel like I'm kind of working on the right track here. Uh so stereo spread. Okay, they're they're talking about how like, hey, you're you're standing here. You have a large machine there, and you have this little red and green sphere that is uh, doing a stereo sound. So you're hearing it in the left and right channels, meaning uh, the sound is you know coming from from in front of you, 
and you're kind of hearing that machine on both like the left and the right hand side in front of you right that's coming from both sides you know as it as as a sound now you wouldn't necessarily hear it from behind you so there wouldn't be any like bleed effect from the speakers from behind it's not really doing that right so you have the stereo spread from from both sides okay um that's that's what i'm that's what i'm figuring here and again i don't know if that's indeed true but it's basically what i'm kind of figuring is the is the process going on here right so if if suddenly the the player the the person there kind of goes more to the right hand side um like maybe they like maybe they kind of turn to the left and start like walking through towards that red spot right then maybe the the sound on the left channel might increase where the right channel wouldn't really increase per se right it might be it might kind of remain the same if not um reduced down in overall volume because the sound would be more um would be higher in the left channel than it would be on the right would you agree with me on that yeah you know again i don't know if this is what they mean by the stereo spread or anything along those lines i'm just it don't you know that really what they mean i'm i'm again i'm not sure um the now the stereo you know when it says stereo spread reduces to zero um when i think of that i think the you have like two channels that are that are doing the the sound right or you know they're they're at, they have both sounds in the left and right channel um when you have the stereo spread reduces to zero either um either the sound is like equal in both parts so you're hearing the same exact sound on both left and right side at you know the equal volume or maybe it refers to one sound uh, takes complete control where the other sound is like completely gone you don't necessarily hear it on that channel anymore so like for example you your character kind of goes on to the right hand side of the machine here right like a, like your character walks to the right hand side of the machine and so therefore you know your the the machine itself is like blaring in your left ear right but you might not necessarily hear it in the right at an, anymore. I mean, it, you know, if you have the non-specialized, then obviously it, it'll fill everybody up, but um, or fill all the channels up. But if it was, if it doesn't do that non-specialized, right? Uh, then, and if you're like getting to a point where, like, you know, you're on the right-hand side, you you hear it mainly on the left channel. But you weren't necessarily hear it anymore on the right. Could that be a consideration of stereo spread reduces to zero as well? I don't know. No. What do you think? I'm not sure. It could be what you say, but I'm not sure. Yeah. I might I'm, need to look it up. Yeah. Look it up. 
like, like I said, you know, I'm I'm not saying that um, my my def my explanation is definitive because I don't really know. Uh, I can be completely off base, and if so, you know, I I welcome any corrections. Um, but uh, I, that's what I'm kind of leaning towards. But again, the, it doesn't really help too much on the normalized 3D sounds anyway. I'm not quite sure what they're really kind of referring to with this last sentence here. Or, you know, just, just this entire paragraph, I'm like, um, you know, why, why would you bother with a six decibel gain reduction? And what, what do you mean by gain and then reduction? <laughs> it's like, I'm going to gain so much that gets reduced. Wait, what? <laughs> uh, obviously, it's probably referring to something else in terms of gain, but I'm, I'm still like, you know, what's what's going on there? What what do you mean? What what's going on? Um, uh, I don't know, friend. This is uh, seeing some very interesting points here. So it didn't really get very far, um, but obviously there was there's quite a few things here that was like on where it's really hitting areas that were like mm, what are we looking at here so uh, so we didn't we haven't covered much and unfortunately it is three o'clock so um, this yeah. is normally when you want to go and get some eat so Um, do you have any, you know, any thoughts concerning what we've kind of covered or anything that you want to kind of get off your chest concerning this so far? Or I think I might need to look for some video that shows like examples of what this is doing. Mm -hmm. How this is actually working. Yeah. We might need to do that. Um, well... Let's, when we cover through the, um, when we get through all of the, the you know, working with sound, you know, we're, we're, we're on this topic of working with sound, and we're going, going through all these additional topics and stuff like that, um, maybe we should, maybe it'd be in our best interest to, like, go back through this. I find the topics that are really, that really kind of made us struggle a little bit and see if there's some YouTube videos that we can, um, I, I don't really want to play them during our streams because, um, you know, again, copyright and all that kind of jazz, I, I, you know, I don't necessarily want to screw those guys over in, in that regard. Um, because, you know, we'd have to make, make it transformative if anything. And then even then, you know, I'd, <laughs> I'm really bad at that and doing that, you know, because bad editor. Um, yeah. but still, um, we might need to kind of cover over it a little bit. Like maybe, obviously we won't necessarily, maybe we'll play it during our stream, but well, you know, you and I will hear it, but we'll like turn it off for everybody else. I don't know. Um, hard. It might be a little difficult for me to go about doing that. Mm. I don't know. Uh, or, or we may need to just kind of watch them off stream. So, um, if anybody has any suggestions for videos that might try to help explain some of these topics or some of these uh, subtopics, then please feel free to speak up and let us know, you know, provide us links, provide us explanations, 
um, real world examples to try to say, you know, hey, this is how you need to kind of go about thinking it, whatever, you know, please feel free to speak up and let us know. But um, I think that's where we're going to go ahead and call it for tonight, though. Um, I'm going to kick Blackheart out so he can go and get himself some food and then yeah. so that he can enjoy um, Star Rail later on tonight. <laughs> yep. Um, Hopefully this time the poll gives me what I want and not <laughs> pull, give me something that's not even on the banner. Hmm. I, I hear you on that one. Um, although two characters that were that are currently on the banner it's like mm, i wasn't really that impressed with either of them per se but you know that's me i i really wish the uh, last banner was still active <laughs> <laughs> i would have loved to have gotten silver wolf but yeah um but oh well that's uh, can't can't do anything anymore about that so um, but I don't know. Is there a character that you liked? Well, actually, you know, let me. Uh, I think I'm, I'm trying to get Blade, honestly, or anyone that can deal some damage, especially after the last boss I did from the uh new uh, like event that was at it. That at least a story part of it, mm. which I advise you do before doing your equilibrium because it's a tough boss hmm. um, that you need someone that can deal damage <laughs> it right. is one of those okay i'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording here so um i want to thank everybody for watching um you know feel free to do a like and subscribe help us out with the youtube algorithm check out our descriptions you know both of ours you know you know, if you can help us out both, you know, that would be fantastic. Would love that. Um, you know, feel free to give a comment on either of our videos or both. Either, you know, both can be fine There's just as much. Uh, both would be helpful. Um, but that's where we're going to go ahead and end our Unreal portion of the stream. So thank you very much for watching. I appreciate it. Hopefully I catch you next time. Till then, take care. Have a good night. Stay healthy. Stay safe. I'll catch you strangers next time.